Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. I have another meals video for you guys. Now we are gonna start out with a failure of a meal. <laughs> and I was actually contemplating deleting this video and not showing you. I thought I would be really transparent with you and let you know that I am definitely not immune to things going wrong in my kitchen. And this meal kind of was a little bit of an epic fail at the beginning, it definitely was frustrating to make, but we ended up kind of saving it at the end. So it was all good. So the meal is an Instant Pot sausage and pepper pasta. So I am going to turn my Instapot onto the saute feature and add one pound of Italian sausage to it. And I'm just gonna get it all crumbled up and then start to get it sauteing. Once I get it good and sauteed, I am gonna come in and add some onion powder. Now the recipe does state that you can actually use half a diced onion. And then I'm gonna add some garlic to this. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of garlic. It does call for one clove of garlic and then one cup of diced bell peppers. You're going to make sure that you get everything good and sauteed and make sure that those bell peppers are nice and soft. And once you get them softened, you are going to come in and add your other elements. So you're going to add one teaspoon of dried oregano, one teaspoon of dried basil, half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. Now the recipe calls to use half a cup of red wine. I didn't have any available, so I did some research to try to find out what I could substitute for. And one thing it said was balsamic is a perfect substitution for red wine because it matches the sweetness and tartness. So what I did is I took a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar and a quarter cup of water and I just mixed them together and added that and it really was amazing substitute. I think I'm going to do that from now on because I love balsamic vinegar and you really couldn't tell there was vinegar in it. It was really, really good substitution. So then you're going to add two and a half cups of an uncooked pasta. You're going to add one can or one 14 point five ounce can of chicken broth, one can or one 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes, and then one can, six ounces of tomato paste. You're gonna stir it all together, you're gonna put your lid on, and then you are going to manually select high pressure for five minutes. This is what happened, burn error. This is always what happens to me when I choose to saute something. I also think that the noodles I was using were a little bit too, like they, I think they absorbed too much water. I'm not sure, but I got the burn error and I got the burn error twice. <laughs> so I added a little bit of chicken broth to it. I probably went in and added another, I would say maybe three quarter cup of chicken broth because I thought for sure it was the noodles that were was causing it. So then I put it back on and then that happened again. It was frustrating because you have to manually release all of the pressure and then try to do it again. So finally, after the second time, I just got fed up. I gave it a little taste test and the noodles were actually pretty cooked already. And again, because we chose to actually fully cook the vegetables and that sausage, that was already all cooked as well. So I gave it a little t taste test here and everything was good. Just put it on the oven for a couple more minutes and it was all good. We put it in a bowl, put some Parmesan cheese on it and had some sourdough with it and it ended up turning out okay. But definitely <laughs> there was something with it. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I just kept getting the burn error. So it made a very quick meal, very not quick. <laughs> but overall it tasted good. For the next meal, we are going to make a ground beef a stir fry. My week took a huge turn on this particular night. I actually ended up breaking my toe and the top part where the toe meets the foot, I ended up breaking that part also. So I kind of got really immobile really quick. <laughs> so the next meals are all meals that I really could not stand for a very long time to make, so they're fairly quick meals. This one I was really excited to find because I had those peppers I needed to get used up. Again, my garden is just pumping out the peppers, so I'm trying to find recipes to use them. So we are just going to get those peppers chopped up. Then that day we had actually gone to Sam's Club prior to the injury. <laughs> and we picked up a huge thing of these baby bell mushrooms so I'm just slicing up about five of them they were really really big mushrooms the recipe itself just says to use an eight ounce thing of mushrooms then we had a couple of garden fresh carrots there that I was going to use in here as well it just says to use one large carrot cut into matchsticks I didn't want to do the matchsticks because these are really small carrots so I just did small diced it also says that you can add half a pound of asparagus with the ends trimmed and make sure that they're chopped and then you can also use half a large onion in this if you would like so with that ground beef that we have 
browning on the stove top. We did about a pound of ground beef. We're just gonna get it completely browned and then we are going to remove it from the heat. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to that stock pot and then add our vegetables. We're gonna get the vegetables completely cooked through, like softened. While they are softening, we are going to get the stir fry sauce made. I decided to double this recipe because I always find that recipes do not give you enough sauce for the actual meal. So I will tell you what the recipe says, but you will see me adding different quantities. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of coconut aminos. It says you can use soy sauce as well. One teaspoon minced garlic one teaspoon of minced fresh ginger. I just grated my ginger because I thought it would incorporate a little bit better. We're gonna use one teaspoon of sriracha. This stuff is so hard to find and I'm being really, really baby with it. Like the recipe has to be good for me to use it. This one looked okay, so I said it was okay to use. <laughs> then you're gonna add one teaspoon of rice vinegar, one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil, one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup, two tablespoons of water, and then what you're gonna do is whisk that together and then you are going to whisk in one tablespoon of arrowroot powder. If you don't have arrowroot, you can definitely use cornstarch. I decided to actually use edamame beans in this because the original recipe called to use asparagus. I didn't have any, so I substituted with edamame. I just cooked them in the microwave just for a minute so that they weren't completely frozen and then added them in. And then we also added some of our homemade onion powder to it. Added the ground beef back into the skillet once everything was cooked. And then we're gonna add that stir fry sauce. It cooks really, really quickly because that air root thickens everything up super quick. So once you add that sauce, it almost is ready right away. I had made white rice earlier that day. So we just had that with the stir fry on top of it. And it was a really, really good meal. Definitely a super quick meal, which I really appreciated on this night. I will have all of these recipes linked for you guys below in the video description if you want to give them a try. The next meal, I was craving ribs. Like I was craving a good sticky rib. So I decided to make some sticky honey garlic baby back ribs. I had actually checked out a couple books from my local library, cookbooks. I love getting cookbooks from the library. It is one of the best ways to kind of test drive a cookbook to see if it's something that you really want to buy. So I found this one cookbook. I did not write down what it was called though. So I just literally took a picture of this recipe from the cookbook and tried it. This was the only recipe out of the cookbook that I actually liked. So I decided to bring it back to the library and I totally did not write down the name of the book. So what I'll do for you guys is I will leave in the video description just kind of a list of the ingredients and the measurements that I used on this recipe. So I have two racks of rib there. They are approximately about three pounds. And what I'm doing is just taking some garlic powder, some salt and some ground pepper and just making a dry rub with it. I'm gonna cover the tops and the bottoms of the ribs. I know I didn't mention it before, but I have a large rimmed baking sheet there and I double lined it with some tin foil and just covered a little bit of olive oil on there. So you wanna put these ribs in the oven for about 30 minutes just to kind of get the cooking process started. For the sticky sauce, you want to add one and a half cups of a packed brown sugar. So it means just really pack that full. I'm using a half cup measuring. That's why it looks like I'm adding more. And then you're going to add half a cup of honey, one cup of water. And then if you want half a cup of minced yellow onion, I just decided to use our powdered stuff because I thought it would kind of work a little bit better in this. I knew that Stephen wouldn't like it if there was the big chunks of onion in the sauce. The powdered stuff actually worked probably better than using the minced onion. Then you're gonna add eight garlic cloves minced. Get that all whisked together. After the 30 minutes, you'll take it out of the oven. I'm just double checking just to make sure that it was looking cooked and not really burnt. So then you're gonna take that sticky sauce and just dump it all over the ribs. It does specify, make sure your ribs are meat size up for this. You are going to increase your oven temperature to 450 and then cover this tightly with aluminum foil and put it back in the oven for approximately one hour. After the hour, just check and make sure that it's done. I actually ended up putting it back in the oven for about 10 more minutes because I didn't find that it was kind of, it wasn't pulling apart as much as I wanted. 
I also had way too much liquid in this pan. I ended up actually taking about a cup of this liquid out, put it back in the oven for 10 minutes, and then I pulled them out, flipped them over, kind of basted all the sides with that liquid. Then I put them back in the oven for an additional 10 minutes. And then when they came out after that 10 minutes, this is what they look like. So you want to put them on a cutting board and just kind of let them cool for a minute until they're easy to touch. Then you're going to cut them up and serve them. These were really, really, really delicious. I am really happy that I decided to actually take a picture of this recipe because I'm definitely going to be copying it and this will be my rib recipe from going forward. It was really good. It was like almost comparable to like a barbecue rib. So I had made some canned baked beans that day. I just can up my own baked beans, made them, and then we had some of our home canned corn. And this was really just hit that spot of the ribs that I have craving. I know that it is fall, but we are actually getting like almost 90 degree weather here lately. So it does not feel like fall. It feels like barbecue weather. So this night I decided instead of making soup to make ribs and I'm glad I did. next recipe I am going to make some jerk chicken. Now my brother-in-law is Jamaican and he has definitely showed me how to make authentic Jamaican jerk chicken but this is not his recipe. This recipe funny enough actually came from another book that I loaned out from the library and it was a Snoop Dogg cookbook. <laughs> so this recipe looked pretty authentic so I thought I would give it a try on this night. So I'm just making the marinade because you do want to marinate these for at least one hour. I actually chose to marinate these overnight because I really wanted that flavor just to soak into the chicken. In the marinade, I am adding a quarter cup of avocado oil, two tablespoons of molasses, two tablespoons of lime juice. It says to use freshly squeezed. I didn't have it, so I just used the bottled stuff. A couple modifications I made to this recipe because I didn't have everything that it called for. It said two hot peppers stemmed and seeded. I only had one jalapeno pepper, so I used that plus some of my dried pepper seasoning just to amp up the spice. It calls for six scallions or what we call green onions and it says the white part and the light green parts just roughly chopped. Then you want to add one one inch piece of peeled fresh ginger, six garlic cloves peeled, one tablespoon of dried thyme leaves, one teaspoon ground allspice, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon of black pepper. Then you're going to put it all in a blender and just get everything all completely pureed up so that you have a sauce. It suggests to use a whole chicken just parted out into eight different pieces. I just used some drumsticks and thighs that I had in my freezer. We don't like the skin, so that's what I'm doing right there is I'm just taking the skin off of the drumstick. So I'm putting them in a really large bowl just to kind of make it easy just for the chicken to get all incorporated. We're gonna take that sauce that we just blended up and cover that chicken completely. Once I got the chicken all covered up, I moved it over to the dish that I'm actually gonna marinate it in and we're gonna cover it. You can actually use a Ziploc baggie for this as well and just marinate it in that. I have this Tupperware one, so it's just easy for me to use. So put it in the fridge for 24 hours. So the next day when it was supper time, I preheated my oven to 375 degrees and I just transferred the chicken and the marinade to a large roasting pan. I was just using a 9 by 13 Pyrex casserole dish. You're just going to cook this for about 45 to 55 minutes until the chicken is kind of like a dark brown. It should bring an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Then what you want to do is remove the chicken from the oven and then let that rest for 10 minutes. The recipe does suggest to serve it with rice. This was a really, really delicious recipe. I'm glad I decided to marinate it for the 24 hours. I have left that cookbook linked for you guys in the video description. For the last meal on this video, we are going to make the most delicious fresh dessert that I think I've ever made. It is so, so good. It is a creamy vanilla grape and apple salad. It almost feels like it should be a summer salad, but it actually incorporates a lot of late summer fall fruits in it. So it is really, really good recipe. I actually wanted to give it a try because I was thinking about potentially using this as something to make on Thanksgiving. So it is definitely, definitely a win. And I'm probably actually going to remake some more today because 
we've already ate through it all. I did make a couple modifications to it because that is what I do. <laughs> I just actually didn't have some of the ingredients so I kind of made it work for how I would have liked it or how I did end up liking it. So you're gonna take eight ounces of cream cheese, make sure it is softened, one cup of sour cream, half a cup of brown sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. So that is gonna be your kind of your cream sauce. You're gonna add that all to a mixing bowl and get that good and mixed up and you're gonna mix that for two minutes until it is a super creamy consistency. What I was doing at the beginning of the video was I was actually getting some grapes cleaned and I did wash my apples as well. So this recipe suggests using one pound of red grapes seedless, one pound of green grapes seedless. I only had the green grapes available so I actually just ended up just doubling the green grapes. The other thing I did was I ended up halving this recipe because I was just trying it out and I didn't want to make a full huge batch if I knew we didn't like it but we ended up liking it so next time I make it I'm gonna make the full batch it is really good in the fridge once it sits for a while you're gonna add some apples to a mixing bowl what I did was I took two Cortland apples it just suggests three red apples sweet cord and dice I'm gonna use two-thirds of chopped pecans so I just kind of did two handfuls and just coarsely chopped them and then you're gonna add the grapes to the bowl also the recipe also suggests adding half a cup of dried cranberries I didn't have it so I left them out. One thing I did have though was raisins. So I ended up using raisins in my individual bowl. Steven actually doesn't like raisins, so I left them out of the whole salad. You're going to put that creamy sauce mix on top and just stir everything up to its nice incorporated. Recipe actually suggests serving it with some extra chopped pecans and a little bit more brown sugar on the top of it if you would like. So this is the last recipe on this video and we finished with a, an amazing recipe. So we kind of started with the flop and ended with a really good recipe. I hope I gave you guys the inspiration for your upcoming meals this week and just showing you how easy it really is to make stuff from scratch. I think that there is this big scary thought with when you're making a recipe from scratch, it has to be complicated, but it really doesn't. It's just a matter of taking what you have and just using it. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.